Hey everyone, you're with Matthew and Amy, and you're at the Hub, and you're also in the Matrix. So I've already been talking about, in other segments, about how strange it is to live in a body. And that's one of the things that I had to explore as a yoga practitioner when I first started. Like, how am I going to move and be able to move through my paralyzed legs and have awareness move through my whole body, even though I could not flex muscles? And it turns out that yoga has dimensions in it, in asana in particular, that allow for the movement of awareness through your body that is not dependent on muscular action. And it's kind of freaky when you start doing it, right? So I want Amy to stand up. So again, this is a, this is a good, you know, Tadasana is a basic pose. If you don't do yoga, don't worry about it, but it's balancing on the four corners of your feet and you're lifting your core up. There's a pose there, right? That, and your feet are going down. All these things are happening in this pose. But, but I want you to start to notice something. And so I'm going to have Amy take her, her right foot forward, lift the toes up, okay? So now I want her to press the inner edge of her big toe mount. I hope you're doing this at home. The inner edge of your big toe mount diagonally down into the floor. Look what she's doing. And then move the pinky toe mount crazy off to the side. Crazy off to the side. Hey, if you're doing it at home, are you moving your pinky finger right now? <laughs> I think you probably are. Right, so start again. There's nothing wrong with that, but this is a really important mind habit that when you are asked to move your pinky toe and your brain does not quite know the pathways to your pinky toe, it grips whatever it can extra hard to try to convince the mind that it's doing something. And that's not, you know, that's a fine habit. It turns out that your pinky finger and your pinky toe are innervated relatively close together. So you only missed by like a few million neural pathways. It's not a big deal. But notice, and it's okay to use your pinky finger, but don't have it cover up your pinky toe. So step forward again. Lift your toes up, and she's going to diagonally press the inner crease of her big toe mound down, and then move the pinky toe mound off to the side. Keep that action. That's all of her arches lifting on the bottom of her foot. She's going to try to keep that activation and set her toes down, and then step in quickly with the other foot. So, Amy, describe what you feel the difference in your feet. Uh, the, the right one, the one that I stepped forward with, just, just feels very spread and, and grounded, whereas the other one's a little bit unmoored. Um, and then there's also, yeah, there's a sensation of, of, of movement of energy in the body. Just by moving, and it's not something she chose. So now she's going to step back again and take the other foot forward. I just want you to notice at home the difference between the two feet. So she's lifting her toes up again. She's pressing diagonally the inner edge of the big toe mound in and down, moving the pig toe mound off to the side, keeping all three arches on the bottom of her foot engaged, setting the toes back down, keeping that activation and stepping in with the other foot. And just notice at home the contrast between one foot and the other. It's kind of stunning, right? So now you have both feet there to lift all your toes up, Press the inner edge of each big toe mount in and down. Move the pinky toe mount off to the side. Keep the activation and set the toes back down. Now I'm wondering at home, are you feeling a lift up through your chest? Are you feeling the rise? I never told you to lift up through your chest. I got you to activate here and the consequence was a rise that did not take any muscular action. It took a start, and then it was received. Mm -hmm. And so, but the thing I want to ask you about, as you feel the rise, do you feel more grounded, less grounded? What do you, like, what is the... Oh, I think I feel more grounded, but I didn't notice the rise when I was standing here before, and it wasn't until I, I stepped in, even with the first one, when I stepped with the right foot and then, then brought the left one up to meet it, I could feel it on the right side, but right. I didn't feel it on the left side, the one that, that hadn't been activated. So then when, of course, when you do both of them, then there's, then there's just a very symmetrical midline rise that occurs. So what's really hopeful, I mean, in, and in the matrix, we're not just doing adaptive yoga, but this is really hopeful for someone like me, is that if I can control parts of my body, but receive a shift of awareness in other parts of my body, and if my nervous system is so miraculous that I can feel subtlety like that, and everybody can, it just takes training and practice, then I get to start feeling whole, 
from inside to out. That is an experience. To get fully, you need to live and explore in the matrix. Thanks for joining us this one. on this one. There will be more. Hey, I'm back. If you liked what you saw, there's more coming. To keep up with new releases, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and turn on your notifications. But no, In the Matrix is intended as an ongoing conversation. Please share with your comments, thoughts, and suggestions, and you may even reshape our next encounter in the Matrix.